Well, good morning, everyone. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline, and I am in the big countdown to get ready to get on the plane to go to Anna Maria Island for my vacation. Now, first off, I want to thank all of you who are messaging me to let me know there's something wrong with my eBay store, which in fact, there's nothing wrong with it. I have decided to shut my whole store down for two weeks. And this is exciting for me to get a complete rest and at the same time, a little nerve wracking because we all know when you shut down your eBay store, it's like a hamster wheel that just stops spinning and it's a little bit hard to get it going again. But after eight years, I feel like taking these breaks is really important for me. It not only rests my body and just gives me a whole break from so much work, but when I come back from a vacation, I feel excited again and renewed again and just ready to jump in and give it my all. That's always been my experience. Although in the past years, when I've taken a vacation, I have hired out my shipping. Most times my daughter, Lisa, I'll hire her to come in and ship out every few days. And I put my store on an extended handling time. And then when something sells, I message the buyer letting them know I'm on vacation and that their item you know, will be shipped out by this date or that date. But this time I have shut down the whole eBay store. So right now, if you look at my eBay store, it looks like I have no items there, which I really don't. I can still see my items. And then about a day or two before I come home, I will turn my store back on and most likely do a big sale, probably 50%, which you guys know me, I only do 50% off my whole store, maybe twice a year. But this will be one of the times I will do that to get my sales going again. Sales have been really, really good. I am really happy with where everything is at. Um, finding great stuff, selling great stuff, connecting with you guys. And yeah, while I'm away, I will be making YouTube videos because the workload for me will be so decreased without having to do eBay that I'm going to bring my GoPro along and see if I can get some footage of the Florida thrift stores or maybe, I don't know, maybe a yard sale or two. Now, right now, my suitcase is packed to the brim. I don't know what's in there, but I am a heavy packer. So if I do find good things to resell, I will get another suitcase and pay for it to come home on the plane with me and have inventory all ready to go when I come home. All right, today I am just out down the road. I want to go to Prussian Street Arcade. That is the, I'm going to call it the vendor booth place that I bring you guys to. I love going there and I think it's a great way to start my vacation. Just milling around, just seeing what pretty things I can find. Maybe I'll find a pretty blouse to bring with me. I don't know where I'm going to fit it. I'm, I'm like a pack mule, but um, that's what I'm up to today. And then tomorrow I fly out and get to see Melissa and Barry. Very excited for that. When we get to Together. It is a talk fest and I will also be visiting some of Barry's music jams so I'm very excited for that. I love that type of music. It's kind of like blues, rhythm and blues maybe. And what else am I doing? Oh, just a bunch of stuff. Meeting up with friends and probably thrifting, truth be told. What else? Eating good foods and a lot of swimming. I'm a big swimmer. I'm not a strong swimmer. I just love being in the water. So that will be the next video. I will be down in Florida, Anna Maria Island, and hopefully I will be able to bring you guys with me and shoot the footage back up here for Lisa to edit and post while I'm away. All right, let's get going today. Let's hit the road. Let's go to Prussian Street Arcade and see what treasure we can find. So eight years ago when I started sourcing to sell on eBay, I pretty much only went to thrift stores and I was pretty much only sourcing women's clothing, and that's where I came up with the name Lavender Clothesline. But as the years went by, I not only learned to source different things, I learned to shop at different places. This Prussian Street Arcade, 
I'm not sure what to sell it. Vendors market, I would say, has many different vendors, many different styles of booths, and some have really become favorites for my own personal use, and some have become favorites for reselling. So that first booth was kind of like a prairie back to our roots booth that I like to visit and see what kind of straw products they have. So some of the booths, I just go in and take a look to get ideas of what type of items might be selling because I think a lot of vendors really have good taste at Prussian Street Arcade. So I have shown this vendor's booth um, market a couple of times before, but I like to pop in to see if I can find items to flip for a profit. And today was no different. I did come away with, I think probably about 10 or 15 items. And I will do a trunk haul at the end of this video so you can see exactly what I picked up and what types of things I will be adding to my eBay store. Now, like I've said, I'm on vacation right now, so the items that you see in this video probably won't be listed for a couple of weeks. Here I'm looking at a peasant blouse. This blue and white blouse caught my attention for my personal use. There I am holding it over myself because I really didn't try, want to try anything on. It was a one size, and that's what the OS stands for here. I'm always suspect of one size item clothing. <laughs> How could one piece of clothing fit every size? I guess it's one size fits most, but I did really like it, but I felt $22 was high. So I did hang it back on the rack. Once in a while, I like to look at vendors booths to see if that's a way that I want to resell in the future. So as I get older, I'm always considering what my options might be along with selling on eBay. Now, right now, I'm usually handling between 3,000 and 4,000 listings on eBay, which is a lot of work. So as I grow older, it would be nice to cut that down. Now, when I say grow older, I mean in my 70s, to cut that amount down and maybe do a vendor's booth and carry only 2,000 items on eBay. I love that with reselling, there are so many options, so many places to source from, so many items to sell. I never stick to one niche and more and more I realize that there are many different ways to resell, many different business models. Those beautiful floral plates were something that I was considering, but I really only liked the top pattern. This yellow pitcher and glassware caught my attention. This is Blendo and in my experience, Blendo doesn't bring a lot of money but I don't see the yellow as often as I do the pink and blue. Maybe it's just that I haven't found it. I'll have to do a, an eBay search to see if it's something more common. Straw handbags always catch my attention. I do own two of them. I thought this bookend was really good. Pretty sure it's a bookend but there was only one. Now I know a lot of sellers sell only one bookend because people do stack books against a wall or against something else, but with bookends, I pretty much always look for two of them. But I thought a German Shepherd dog was a great, a great design. I have to say the vendors in this vendors market do a great job, just beautiful items. I did like this tall painted can. And this was going for $19.50. I felt that was quite high, even for a vendor's market booth, even if you're not planning on reselling it. I do like to bring this type of video for those of you who are reselling and do have vendors booths. So maybe you can get ideas um, to freshen up your booth or just what type of booth you'd like to run. Here we're looking at Stiegel Glassworks. Stiegel, Stiegel, I think it is. And I did like that business card holder. 
I thought that was very ingenious. I don't believe I have ever found this type of glass um, at flea markets or at yard sales or thrift stores. But I don't know that I would recognize it too, because like I always say, glassware is not my strong suit. But I'm learning. Quite a few jewelry makers give these people a lot of credit. Somebody's hand making all of that jewelry. And I thought these stickers were great fun. To me, they reminded me of the 70s for some reason. I must have had like a, a spiral bound notebook with stickers all over it when I was a teenager. I do like roaming around and seeing the different booths and the different vendor spaces. And this next one is a favorite of mine. Not that I've really bought too much. I think I've only bought one or two things from this area. My favorites are the ones that carry the vintage items, which we will be getting to very shortly. I thought these rugs were beautiful. And right now with doing my office over again, I'm still considering changing out the rug I have and my old desk will be going. But I will sell both of those on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm always looking for a low profile rug because my office chair has wheels and it has to be able to slide over fairly easily because I am a crazy girl <laughs> in my office chair most days. I'm all over the place. I'm not sure if that was a good price, but that did catch my attention. Not for resale, but I thought $15 for that mug was, was fairly good. More store handbags. So if you have not seen me video this market before, I think this is the third time I'm videoing here because the vendors do change and the vendors themselves change out their booths quite often. They're always rearranging because this market does quite well. There's a big turnover of merchandise here. And here we come to my all time favorite booth here. Okay, for some reason my video skipped the booth that I did shop in and it has jumped to this part of the video so I'm just going to go with it. This was a solid wood sculpture. What? <laughs> $8.95 Weeping Buddha. This is just amazing to me. How does something like this wind up in Pennsylvania? Very crazy. Of course I had to try the rotary dial phone. We've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> this vendor always has an interesting booth. I don't buy a lot in this booth. And today I wound up picking up a piece that had more damage than I thought. So I did purchase it and I wound up coming back in and returning it and they were great about it. I apologized and said I didn't have my glasses on and it was something that I wasn't aware there was as much damage as, um, and I didn't recognize it. So I will show you that piece in a little while. This was a bottle cap shell art dish. Looked like it was brass. Very drawn to old pictures. That one was beautifully rematted.
So now I am finding the piece that I didn't realize there was as much damage as there was, and it was right in front of me, but sometimes I miss it when filming a seahorse ashtray. And for some reason, I did not realize that the damage was so big. I really try to stay away from damaged items. Now with buying vintage pieces and, you know, a lot of pottery, Sometimes I will accept if things have small flaws because of the age and the amount of use. But I try my best to buy the very best condition items that I can find. Here I'm spotting a piece of Tanala pottery, $8.95, which I felt was very fair. And I'm realizing that I really need to feel pieces when I'm filming so that I don't mistake in, you know, how much damage a piece has, but I do pick him up. Now he won't bring a high profit, but I really do like uh, Tanala pottery. See the way this has China written on the bottom? I feel like this is made in China, but an older piece. That's a cloisonne. And I left that one behind. I think because this pink pig was catching my attention. If he would have been around the $6 mark, I would have picked that up. And here I'm just appreciating that Buddha statue. Look at the size of that compared to that piano. Crazy. Just crazy. Now this booth, I pretty much cannot pick up anything for resale because of the price point, but I really wanted to film this to show you how beautiful these pieces were. Handmade and loved again. I like that name. I love when people repurpose different things and just find a new life for items that would otherwise be finished. Okay, and here we are coming back to my favorite booth. I'm not quite sure what happened here. I think the vendor was restocking and I was trying to give her time to restock. Look at this bird. This is so good. Absolutely love this duck. And I go ahead and just grab him up. Now we did meet the owner of this booth. Her name was Karen. And we chatted for a while, a really nice woman, and I told her how much I loved her booth and how I had bought here many times. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the trunk haul so you guys can see what I actually picked up. So if you're in the area, Mannheim, Pennsylvania, you wanna be sure to check out Prussian Street Arcade. So this is what the bag looks like. And I don't know the girl's name at the front desk, but she was a sweetheart and made a pile of all of my things and wrapped them so pretty. Okay, so the majority of this I bought at the same booth, Creek and Willow Vintage. So that is what their branding looks like. And I will try to show you what I bought. Now this was a set of three plates. Okay, so we have the larger one. Oh dear, I didn't know everything was taped. Let's see if I can do this quickly. So it was this large plate and two of these, and I paid $8 for them. It's a great price. Let's see what's in this little present. This is like an unwrapping, an unboxing, very fun. I did pick up in the same booth this beautiful branch and leaf sculpture. I forget what this is made out of. It's like the glass. I've sold trees made of this before, and I paid $6 for this. I thought this would look beautiful on a, like a pile of books or just anywhere in a china cabinet. So that is that item. Let's see what else we got. All right, I think this is the third plate. So it's like, it's not an enamel, it's like a painted uh, brass, I'm gonna say. Okay, we got a lot of stuff today. Look at this beautiful horn. This is natural horn. 
and the vendor Karen and I were trying to figure out what this button was made out of and I think this might be where the rawhide string would be attached to. I'm not quite sure about that. And we were guessing that this might be Bakelite, but I don't know about that either. This could be some kind of horn or bone. Just beautiful. And I paid $22 for that, which I felt was very good. Next up, this beautiful bud vase beautiful shades of aqua. It is a painted brass, no marking on the bottom. This is probably, I'm going to guess, about four or five inches high. And I paid $8 for it. Oh, this is a heavy one. One of my favorites. Favorites, favorites. Look at this swan. I think this might be soapstone. It could be a marble, but I'm pretty sure a soapstone. Just stunningly beautiful. $12. And what does it say? Oh, it says metal. I don't think this is metal. I think this is stone. Okay, hopefully none of my paper blows away. It's a little bit windy out today. Okay, this was another booth. Let's see if the booth is marked. Metal seahorse with, with damage, $13. This is an ashtray. And it does have one of its um, fins missing. And I knew that ahead of time, but I thought this was still good. So I went ahead and took this, $12.95. We'll see about that. The damage might hurt it, I don't know. But I've never seen that before, so I went ahead and took it. Safe little seahorse. All right, what is in this package? Like unwrapping little presents. Oh, this is a favorite. So this is what this looks like. It's handmade and I'm not sure what age this is, but look at that fish design. Probably like a dipping sauce bowl for soy sauce or Hossein sauce, but I would like to see it used for rings or small delicate, like you take your earrings off at night, you could put them in this. And I paid $4. Okay, three more things and our haul is done. Hopefully the truck's going by, you can still hear me. And I did buy this covered bowl, $8. It seems like it might be inset with like um, a stone of some sort. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand. I think this unscrewed. Just know that this is a jar that opens. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand and I don't wanna put the camera down. So I did get that. And two more pieces. Oh, this is a beautiful, it's almost like Tanala painting, a little bit different, but I think this is Tanala. And this I paid $8 for. He is super good. Pottery. Love the painting, the motif. Just gorgeous. And I think the last one is another Tanala bird. I have been picking these up. These do quite well. Never a high profit um, item for me because I find the smaller ones. I know if you find the bigger pieces, they can be worth a lot of money. I believe he's an owl. Is that an owl? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, guys, that is my shopping trip for today. Please hit the like and subscribe button and I will talk to you soon. Okay, guys, so that is the video for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please hit the like and subscribe button and the bell notification really helps my channel. And I am very excited that my channel is closing in on 35,000 followers. I could not be more over the moon and I appreciate you guys so much. So hit the like and subscribe button if you will, it really helps out my channel. Okay, I gotta get serious and get my suitcase packed and uh, pare down a little bit. I got too much stuff in that suitcase. I'm gonna be sitting on it to close it. All right, thanks again. Go out and get what's yours.